Next, we're going to look at hyperbolas. Um, so the definition for the hyperbola is similar to that of an ellipse, although you get obviously a very different looking curve. Um, there's just one small change, right? In an ellipse, we say, well, the ellipse is this locus of points with the property that the, the distance between that any point on the curve and two foci, that the sum of those two distances is always a constant. Um, well, for a hyperbola, it's not the sum that's a constant, it's the difference. So if I have a point x, y, okay, I've got these two distances from here to here, maybe that's d1, and from here to here. Okay, call that d2, All right? And of course, there's, there's some obvious symmetry here. There's actually almost sort of a fourfold symmetry, right? Um, d1 and d2, there are going to be sort of four points that you get right away, right? Because we can reflect across the x-axis, across the y-axis, right? Or across both. Um, so we can, uh, we can see that we, we get at least, if, once you have one point, there are four other points that satisfy that. And, but you can fill in what are all the other ones look like. They're going to look like this. So, so the requirement here is going to be that the absolute value, right, because, you know, d1, like it is here, could be smaller than d2. The absolute value of that difference has to be some constant. So maybe we call that d. Okay. Actually, you can, you can work out what that d has to be because we can, we can put two distances in. We can say, well, let's put the distance from here to there. Let's call that c again, like we did for the ellipse. And this distance from here to there, let's call that a, right? We have these sort of two vertices for the hyperbola, right? So there are two axes of symmetry, and from that kind of midpoint of that, the, the, where the two axes of symmetry intersect, the distance from there to one of the uh, two vertices, we'll call that A. The distance to the corresponding focus, we'll call C. And so, of course, when you're at, say, one of the two vertices, uh, we can say that, you know, at this particular point, and we might as well these two axes of symmetry, we might as well make those the x-axis and the y-axis, right? So that this is now the point C0, uh, this is now the point A0. Um, of course, we can shift things around, but for now, let's take those to be the x and y axes. Um, so, let's see, if, x is, if xy is equal to just A0, we get the D1, well, d1 is just going to be the distance from here to there, right? So d1 is going to be c minus a. Uh, d2, d2 is the distance from there to the other focus, which is going to be c plus a. All right? Why is that? Well, the, the distance from here to there is a. The distance from here to there is c. Right, so it's a plus c. And so if I'm doing d1 minus d2, what am I going to get? I'm going to get minus 2a, right? So the absolute value is just 2a. So we can actually work out here that the d, the d in question here is just 2a, okay? So d is 2a. And of course, now that we've put coordinates in, we can also. For, for any other point on the hyperbola, we can say what those coordinates have to be, right? Um, the distance here, once again, is going to be x minus c squared, okay, plus y squared. And for the other one, so this is going to be, of course, this will be at minus c zero, and so the distance there is going to be x plus c, just like it was for the ellipse, uh, except here's the key difference, right? Minus sign goes in there. x plus c squared plus y squared, and we take the absolute value of that, because this difference could be negative, we want that to be equal to 2a, right? Okay, so 
just like for the ellipse, we kind of get to this point. Algebra happens. I'll spare you the algebra. You can try it yourself if you want. Probably you're going to start by squaring both sides. Be careful to watch out for extraneous solutions, that sort of thing. But some algebra happens, and you will get down to something that looks like this. x squared minus a squared subtract y squared, sorry, x squared over a squared, subtract y squared over b squared equal to 1. Okay? So that will give you this sort of standard form for a hyperbola. Okay? So that's the standard form. Um, well, it's a standard form if we're opening horizontally. You can also go through the same procedure and do a hyperbola where the foci are on the vertical axis, and so the vertices are also on the vertical axis, and the hyperbola is like this and like this. Um, and then the minus sign will be on the x, the plus sign will be on the y, right? So we just have a change in sign if that happens. Um, so it really just comes down to whether the hyperbola is opening left, right, or up, down, uh, which one of the two coordinates gets the minus sign on it. Um, so that's the standard form. And then, of course, as, as usual, you could also shift. If you want to shift, you're going to get something that looks like x minus x naught squared over a squared, and I always want to write plus y minus y naught squared over b squared equals 1. Right? Um, if you want to capture sort of both horizontal and vertical, you could always put plus or minus 1 here. The minus 1 would correspond to vertical, plus 1 to horizontal. That's Some people like to do it that way. Um, but that's what you get. Okay, uh, so there's a few other details that we need to take care of to kind of capture everything with the hyperbola. Um, one big difference between the hyperbola and the, and the parabola is that um, in a parabola, and we kind of know this from, from basic calculus, right? Think about like y is equal to x squared. As you go around a parabola, right, the, the slope keeps increasing. It keeps curving up, 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 right? It gets steeper and steeper as you go. Um, the hyperbola actually flattens out, right? So the... The, the curvature decreases as you go further out on the hyperbola. And in fact, the hyperbola has two asymptotes. There's a pair of asymptotes. There's one that goes like this. And there's another one that goes like that. Okay? There are these two asymptotes. And actually, you can, you can work out what those asymptotes have to be um, because you can think about for example, you know, what happens if x is large or y is large, right? We can, we can rearrange this. We can move y to the other side. We can solve for y in terms of x. Um, we can make limiting arguments, and we can figure out what that happens has to be. Um, but we'll talk about that in another video. This one's already at about eight minutes, um, so we'll, we'll leave that. We'll bring it up as we work through the examples.